I'm currently standing next to a peacock in Croatia. I didn't think this would ever happen, but crazily enough, the peacock is moving closer towards me, and this is happening in Croatia. Welcome to Dubrovnik, and welcome more specifically to the beautiful island of Lokrem Island. Show Game of Thrones came out, Dubrovnik has been an extremely busy city and if you're like me, on a Sunday here, you'll literally see thousands and thousands of crowds here in Dubrovnik making their way in all their group tours. However, if you do want to find a way to get out of this city, there are actually a few incredible places you can visit outside of Dubrovnik just to escape the hustle and bustle. And that's exactly what we're doing today. We're going to a little island off the coast of Dubrovnik. It's supposed to make things a lot better, is what I've heard. And I've also heard that this is supposed to be a much more peaceful place and sort of like a brief escape from the hustle and bustle of Dubrovnik. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get today's adventure started. Lopka? Today, one person? 27. Now it costs 27 euros for a return trip boat ticket from Dubrovnik to the island called Lokrum, which is where we're going today. And it also includes the entrance fee into the island, but I can't seem to find the boat. I feel so completely lost. Now that is why you come to Dubrovnik. Those blues right there, that is the perfect color. I thought I was here to escape the crowd. <laughs> Pretty sure I messed up because the crowd was on that boat. But welcome officially to Otok Lokrum, also known as Lokrum Island here in Dubrovnik. There's quite a lot to do and there's quite a lot to see, but we're gonna begin just by walking around the island and uh, taking in the beautiful views that this island has to offer. So there's a monastery, rocks, I guess that's worth seeing. The Dead Sea. Didn't know it was here in Yokrum. And a few other things. But we'll spend our time and we'll slowly enjoy this island. Now this right here is one of many peacocks here on the island. This island is actually famous for a lot of wildlife. We've got a lot of peacocks, we've got a lot of rabbits. I hope it doesn't attack me. Stay away. I don't want any trouble, Mr. Peacock. Okay, but anyways, there's a lot of peacocks here on this island and they're famous for being all around. I'm gonna move away. <laughs> they're famous for inhabiting this island. I think it's walking away from me, which is a good thing. But this one right here is a female peacock. You can tell because its um, feathers are grayish. They're not exactly blue. And he's not, she's not flaunting it off, but she's just walking around, enjoying the island. And uh, yeah, very interesting to see peacocks here in Croatia. <laughs> I have to say, even though there were a lot of people on the boat coming over to this island, once you get off the boat, everyone just kind of disappears into their own little world. The island's big enough such that so many people may come here, but they sort of go all into these different places on the island until you don't really see anyone and like, I'm currently alone without anybody really around me. But Lokrum Island gets its name from the sour fruit that it used to raise, Lokrum. And these sour fruits were very typical in this region and they were sold off to the Dubrovnik and of course other places in Croatia. Now today it sort of is like an old inherited sort of island with a lot of different parts where it's got like monasteries, it's got a fort and it's been used for a variety of purposes over the many hundreds of years that Dubrovnik has been around. It's been a monastery, you know, it's been used as a military strategic point with a fortress. So. Lokum Island itself has had a lot of different uses and a lot of different purposes and today it's actually a forest reserve and it's actually illegal to stay overnight here. You have to go back to Dubrovnik in time. So with that said, I think we're currently at our first stop right behind me and that was Peacock. But we are currently at our first stop which is right behind me here. This is the monastery on Lokum Island. Throne of Game of Thrones. Right there. Turns out there's a massively long line to sit on the throne. 
Now this monastery here is the Benedictine Monastery on Locum Island. In 1023, Dubrovnik suffered from a very, very serious fire, and in order to protect them from ever having fires again, they basically promised St. Benedict that if they sort of respected him and revered him, that they would then be protected from the fires. So in exchange, they built this massive monastery on the island in the name of St. Benedict. Now today, as you can probably tell, it's turned into the beautiful luscious garden that is right behind me. And it also hosts the visitor center, which gives you a little bit more information about Loquin. But the fact that it's preserved and it was built in the 1000s, so it almost has a history of almost a thousand years. And the fact that it's still standing and being so well preserved, is pretty impressive in my opinion. I think this is supposed to be a big deal, but I've never watched Game of Thrones. But I am sitting on the throne from the Game of Thrones. Now one of the main reasons why Lokum is so important and it's preserved as a sort of forestry site is because it has one of the largest sort of plant diversity in all of Croatia. There are supposedly over like 400 species of plants and right now we're walking through the botanical gardens which hosts a lot of these plants. I mean, if you look right here, like there are these plants that I've never seen before. But these are plants that were grown here in Lokrum. Like I mentioned before, this was a place where they used to grow those sour fruits, Lokrum. So it has also a bit of an agricultural background of growing different vegetables, different trees, different plants that you're not going to find everywhere else in Croatia. That's what makes this place so special. And it's also, like I said, one of the main reasons why they've decided to protect this entire island. They even have Australian Tasmanian eucalyptus here in Croatia. <laughs> Who would have known? Well, right at the very top of the island is this incredible structure right at the top. This is a place known as Fort Royal, and it was a fort originally built not by the Croatians or the Ottomans or anyone here near here, actually. It was built by the French in 1835, and then the Austrians actually helped to complete it. But as you can probably see, this fort is a pretty important position. You have the most amazing view over the Adriatic Sea. You can see so far away, and before they even attack Dubrovnik, you'll already see any enemies that are approaching. Now, there's an unobstructed view of Dubrovnik, which is pretty incredible. You can see the old town walls, you can see the beautiful red roofs that make up the old town of Dubrovnik City. But from here, you really get a great sense of the ocean breeze. It just blows in from the ocean and it literally feels incredible. Now, I had mentioned that there were a lot of people who got off the boat, but the fact is, not many people actually make it up here because the hike up here is not exactly the easiest. They have to go through this thing called the Path of Paradise, is what they call it. But to be honest, I literally saw five people fall down and stumble as they were trying to climb up the Path of Paradise. So it seems more like a path of hell. But with that said, the view from up here at the top makes it a completely 10 out of 10 worth it. Now for most of you all, we have lived through the COVID-19 pandemic and I'm sure everybody is familiar with the word quarantine. This magic word about how we have to stay in self-isolation throughout the whole pandemic. But this place right here was for a different pandemic, the Black Death. When the Black Death originally came to Europe, it came through coastal cities like Venice and Dubrovnik. And when the Black Death came here, they had to build up quarantine stations in order to make sure that people were quarantined away from the main urban areas of Dubrovnik as they still wanted to continue in trade. This area right here behind me, this entire massive structure used to be a lazaretto, which here in Dubrovnik referred to a place where they could be quarantined. This was actually the third in the region that was built to protect uh, the people of Dubrovnik from the Black Death. And anyone who came will be put here for I think it was like 14 days or 40 days, something like that, in order to make sure that they were not suffering symptoms from the Black Death. Now, years have gone by since then, it's almost been 500 years. And today, it's become a beautiful olive grove. And the best part is, I don't think there's anybody here that I have to share this olive grove with. So now it's just a bunch of olive trees, and you can even see the original ruins of where the rooms would be for different people but it's just a beautiful olive garden nowadays. Because this place is on the far side of the island, nobody comes here, which probably makes it my favorite place on the island and probably the best in Dubrovnik.
I did not expect us to be adventuring like this today, but sometimes you gotta risk it to get the biscuit. And this is pretty cool. Whew. Oh, we did make it to the other side. And right there, that's the blue ocean. And that is this incredible natural formation, this arch where you've got a little pool of water here at the bottom that you can swim in. Now, I actually saw someone swimming in here earlier and quite a few people actually enjoy swimming around Logram Island. It's an incredible place to do some swimming and get into the water. But to be honest, I have a better spot in mind. And to do that, we're gonna need to head back to Dubrovnik. I hate crawling through tight spaces. If that's not already clear by now, it's never easy for somebody who's above six feet tall to get through small places like these. And just like that, we are back in the town of Dubrovnik and we've got dropped off right at the harbor. But in order to get to the nicest beaches here in Dubrovnik, we gotta take another bus. So let's go ahead and find the right bus to take us there. Okay, scratch that, turns out. The bus doesn't run today because it's a Sunday. And when the buses don't run, that means our only choice is to walk. So it's gonna be a long while until we get there. Let's go ahead and start walking. That right there, that is Locum Island. That's where we came from earlier. And now we're just on the opposite side, looking over to the island. That's how fast you can get around here in Dubrovnik. I think this cat's had a long day. Let's try to rest under the shade. It is very hot out there, isn't it? Yeah? Okay, we'll let it rest. It may be a little ways out of the way of the actual old town of Dubrovnik, but after about a 30 minute walk and a bunch of very adorable cats, welcome to one of the most hidden beaches here in Dubrovnik that people tend to forget. This is Veti Jakob Beach. One thing I've always loved about the Adriatic is how blue the waters are. Whether it's here in Croatia or in Albania or other places in the Balkans, the water is always this perfect, transparent, clear blue color. And right now, this is no exception. I've been dying to get a swim into the Adriatic Sea for a long time now. So let's jump into the ocean. This is probably one of the most incredible beaches that you can find here in Dubrovnik. And the best part is, there's like barely anyone here. Like look at this at sunset. There are less than five people on this beach. And that's saying a lot considering how many people are over there right now at that old town. And there's barely anyone here at all for that matter. But this has been such an incredible beach and it is one of the most beautiful places. The water is so clear and it's so blue. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stay here and watch the sun set right over Dubrovnik because we're literally opposite the town of Dubrovnik. That's Dubrovnik right there. On this beach, we have the most perfect view of the ocean and of the sunset. And it's just beautiful. Just like that, the sun has officially set here in Dubrovnik, Croatia, and that marks the end of another day here in the beautiful Balkans. Today has been such an incredible day. We may not only have had a half day here in Dubrovnik, but I think we really made the most of it. Lokrum Island is such an incredible, almost like oasis from Dubrovnik. It lets you escape from the hustle and bustle of the tour groups and instead you really feel immersed, whether it's the peacocks or the olive gardens, you just completely feel like you've escaped Dubrovnik and the hustle and bustle of it. And then of course, coming over to Sveti Jakob Beach, this incredible beach, a little bit pebbly, but the water, it's crystal blue. And that's what you get when you're here in the Adriatic. You get some of the clearest water that you could ask for and some of the friendliest people in the world. But with that, 
that's the end of our first video here in Dubrovnik. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. We've got a lot more videos coming here from Croatia too. Make sure to stay tuned. I'm excited to show you more of this amazing country that has so many beautiful places to it. And if you enjoyed this video, definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more food and travel videos. Like I said, we've got more videos coming from this incredible country of Croatia. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye guys.